Hey everybody, my name is Jared Tate, the founder of the Digibyte Blockchain. Today is Friday, May 3rd, 2024, and I'm coming to you with a quick Digibyte development update. Now, if you're new to Digibyte and you don't know what our blockchain is, first of all, welcome to the community. Digibyte is a 10 plus year old, truly decentralized blockchain with no centralized company, no employees, and it's powered by people like you all over the world. If you wanna learn more, go to digibyte.org. And most importantly, if you love Bitcoin, try sending a Digibyte transaction, and I guarantee you, you're gonna love the speed of Digibyte. Try it yourself today. Uh, with that, let me go into a development update. So I'll just go ahead and minimize myself right here. So first of all, if you haven't seen my previous update videos, we are in the process of the final testing for Digibyte version 8.22, which is the eighth major version of Digibyte in the last 10 years. Now, every time we've done a previous version, we've always made sure that the final step is test mining on mainnet live in the wild. And that's what we've been doing. And we've been doing that on a pool that I was able to get set up this last week that we call DigiHash. Now, the thing with DigiHash is it's a pool we've had in the past, but it got too expensive for me to maintain. It actually takes a lot. It's running four of the five Digibyte mining algorithms right now. It requires a pretty big server. That server costs about $300 a month, and that's actually why I ended up shutting it down a couple years ago. But it's essential for testing. So I ran into a few issues over this last week and a half that I actually described here on um, uh, GitHub. And the issue is in 8.22, we are making the change away from what are known as legacy wallets. And those are Digibyte addresses that start with a D or previously Bitcoin addresses that start with a one or a three. And the reason we're moving away from legacy wallets to descriptor wallets is descriptor wallets are a new way of handling the wallets within the wallet that rely on something, they re rely on an SQL light database. Now, the thing about legacy wallets is they require something in the code, in the core protocol, a dependency known as Berkeley DB. And Berkeley DB is a C++ library that hasn't been updated in like 12 years now. So that's why the Bitcoin devs, as well as us, we need to move away from this. The problem is a ton of legacy infrastructure that's been built over the last decade, like exchanges, mining pools, stuff like that, were designed to work with the legacy wallets. And there's been enough RPC command changes and other changes in 8.22 that I actually ran into several issues trying to get DigiHash up and running. Now, I was eventually able to figure it out, and it was actually a little easier than I thought, but I still had to make some modifications to the mining pool. Now, the thing about 8.22 is by default, when you create a new wallet, it's automatically a descriptor wallet. And through the GUI, there's actually no way to create a legacy wallet. However, via Digibyte D, which is the, the server side implementation of the core wallet, you can actually do it via RPC commands. And I went ahead and added some detailed instructions here on how I got this running. Uh, there's some special configurations you need to make on a server to run multiple instances of Digibyte D, as well as special commands. And this key right here to when I, I, I got Digibyte D running on the server, I was able to come in here and run this special command, create wallet with the name flag, and then generate legacy addresses. And once I did that and made some other changes to the pool, I was able to up, up and get it running. So the good news is it's been running for, it'll be 24 hours here in a little bit, and we've got one block so far. Now we have a miner on each algorithm, but we need more miners. Now I know a lot of you may not have ever mined before, and it is, it can be a little complicated, but the easiest way to mine is you can actually rent miners. And there's two really good platforms that I've used over the years. There's uh, Mining Rig Rentals, which I was in the process of trying to get back into my account because it's been a couple of years. Um, they probably are my most recommended, but you can go there, create an account, you can send some crypto, and you can actually rent a miner for like an hour, for 30 minutes, and you can help us test this. And what you do is you go to getting started, you choose which of the four algorithms you want. So like if I go to script right here, all you do is copy 
probably the higher difficulty. And if, if you're gonna help test mine and you need a higher difficulty and for me to adjust the pool settings, I've already adjusted it for a couple miners, just ping me and let me know. But you just simply copy that address, that URL, you go into your mining rig rentals interface and then you can actually drop it. And once your crypto deposit clears, you can rent for 30 minutes or an hour and uh, all, you, all you need is a Digibyte address, but you need the old kind of Digibyte address, which starts with a D. If it starts with DGB, the pool won't recognize it. And this brings up another conversation, which is why I started this GitHub topic of, should we just stick with legacy wallets by default when a new wallet is created? Because there's so much infrastructure that has been built, well, let me know. I mean, there's there's a lot of new advantages and descriptor wallets are better long term and eventually this infrastructure needs to be updated. But I can verify that most exchanges, if not all, are still built on legacy architecture. So even the latest versions of Bitcoin haven't been integrated in four years now into most supporting Bitcoin infrastructure, let alone Digibyte infrastructure. So Tell me what you think. Should we just keep it out how it is? You know the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's kind of where I'm at. But it's important that we had to go through this so we can explain it to anybody who wants to use 8.22 in the future or integrate descriptor wallets. So we can explain that. If you go to the DigiHash repository, I've got instructions with examples here uh, that kind of go through it. So uh, one of the other issues that we've been running and we've got some feedback is it seems several people in the community are running into an error that is thrown when they try to send multiple transactions at once. And it's this long chain mempool error. And it's kind of confusing to me because I can't replicate it. And I don't know what y'all are doing to, to throw it. Um, I can tell you that there's a limit of 25 ancestors or descendants in an unconfirmed transaction. So if y'all are trying to send multiple transactions that aren't confirmed yet there's a limit to how many you can do and you got to wait for the confirmation so if somebody could walk me through there's been multiple people report this um but you shouldn't be able to send that many unconfirmed transactions it causes issues in forks and mempool and that's why this error too long mempool chain is happening so it should be throwing that error if somebody's trying to send more than 25 unconfirmed transactions in a row. So uh, there's been a couple of these issues open. I need to respond a little bit more detail. Uh, but those are the kind of the two things that are holding it up. Now, the good news is, like I said, we were able to get one block so far, uh, one script block, looking through the logs, everything appears normal. That's good. Um, you know, it, it's hard to test mining on mainnet um, for a version release, but we need to do it. But uh, we need to get blocks for every algorithm. So if you've got some mining power, or you want to try mining, you know, please help us out. Uh, just go to digihash.digibyte.io and you can throw some hash at that pool and let's get a few blocks over this next uh, few days. Now there's another place you can rent uh, that's nice hash. Um, I have used them in the past, so that's another place you can go. But the two places I would recommend if you're looking to rent some miners for a little bit, just to try it out, get your feet wet, figure it out, is miningrigrentals.com and then nice, nice hash. Um, so with that, I want to keep this update short because I know I kind of get a little long on some of the other ones. But also, the other thing we're looking is to get more DGB Tor nodes out and to get some more feedback. I haven't seen any feedback people having issues setting up Digibyte Tor nodes, um, but that would be great if you could provide some feedback. So just to summarize, we are test mining. Everything's looking good so far. I don't see any major issues. If we can get blocks on all five algos and the mining pool seems to be working fine, we've worked through this legacy wallet adaptation, you know, I think we're on the verge of a final release here. So uh, with that, I want to thank everybody that's helping test. And if you would like, you know, you can help fund me work part time. I'm trying to spend 20 or 30 hours a week. Um, if I can't get enough funding, I'm still going to volunteer my hours because we need to move things forward and we need to keep 8.22 going. But I could use a little Digibyte if I need to rent some more hash. In the past, when I've done this, I've probably spent upwards of anywhere from 500 to a couple thousand dollars renting miners. 
to really put the latest version through the ringer. That's what I did with 7.172 and 7.173 um, a few years ago. Uh, but anyway, thank you to everybody who's contributed and, you know, helps out. And, you know, until next time, uh, stay decentralized. Cheers.